Hey everyone, how are you guys doing? Welcome back to another episode of a dark reaction. And that is not the theme of the show, that is the name of the show, even though it could be the theme of the show as well, because it's not a it's not a happy times fun show, but uh here we are, dark. So we're watching episode three right now, but before we go into that, we're gonna be talking a little bit about what happened previous episode. Now I don't think that a lot happened for most of that episode, uh, except for a thing that happened at the very end, which is just a lot. That That's actually a lot, but uh, I'm going to try to go through what happened previous episode real quick. It was a while ago. It was like a week and a half ago for me, and uh, I haven't even edited the episode, so I haven't gotten a refresher yet, but I'm going to try to do this from memory. So, previous episode, um, I feel like for, like, half of it, we, it, they wanted us to think that it was the f dad of Eric, that was his name, right? Eric Ovendorf, uh, the ginger kid that went missing, and he's been missing since before the show began, since before episode one, and, um, actually, uh, he was found dead. I believe previous episode well no he wasn't found dead but he we saw him dead uh, because we saw when they were gonna torture him and I just remember that I did notice previous episode that they okay so in episode one they were tying him up to the electric chair and then in episode two they were tying him up to the electric chair again so that makes me think, okay, did they just do the same scene twice for no reason and just hope that we wouldn't notice? Or is that an actual important part that, I, like an important plot point that I should notice? You know, uh, maybe they'll come back around to that. Maybe just, there's two Eric's. Uh, maybe one is like an alternate timeline Eric. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with that, so... We'll see. Something else that happened is that, uh, so the, the dead kid that they found at the ending of episode one, um, they actually looked into that body and they found out that that kid actually was wearing, uh, like clothes and everything from the eighties. He looked like an average eighties kid, which made me, well, I thought about it before it was even said, but, uh, now I'm like almost sure that that kid is actually Mads, which is, uh, what was his name? What was his name? Because that, uh, Ulrich, yeah, that was his name, Ulrich, Discount Mads Mikkelsen. So Ulrich's, Ulrich's brother, I'm convinced that it's him, but it could also not be him. It could be literally anyone. It could just be someone that is completely unrelated, but we'll see. Uh, my theory right now is that it's Mads, uh, Ulrich's brother that went missing, uh, 32, I think it was two years ago. Um, what year was that? 85, 86, I don't remember exactly. But at the end of the episode, we saw that Mikkel, the kid that went missing at the very end of episode one, which is uh, Magnus's brother, Magnus's and Martha, was it Martha, right? Yes. Uh, Magnus and Martha's brother, little brother, the kid that has a thing with skeletons and magicians, uh, he went missing uh, at the end of episode one, and then we found out at the end of episode two that he actually time-traveled 32 whatever years in the past, and he met his own dad, Ulrich, when he was an 80s stupid kid, and he was dating his mom. Um, so that's weird, and we'll see what's going to happen with that, yes. Um, so something that I actually didn't really think about previous episode, I don't think, is that right now, okay, okay, so what I think I thought about was Mikkel was actually, like, the hooded person that went into the hotel, the really mysterious person, the person that saw the newspapers with Mikkel went missing, and he said, like, where is Mikkel? And he, like, crossed that and said, and wrote, when is Mikkel, you know? And actually, while well, editing episode one, I realized that Mikkel, in episode one, um, he was doing, like, a magic trick, and his dad was like, he was like, how did you do that? And Mikkel is like, that's not the question. The 
The question is, when did I do that? And the fact that in episode two, we see the the man in the hotel crossing the word how and just writing when makes me think that's probably Mikkel. That's there is a reason why they did that. Like there's like it's like a double reason why they did that if it's actually him. So I think it's him uh, because that would actually answer a lot of things. But it's something that I didn't really think about uh, because I was so bought into the idea that that is him is the fact that Mikkel could just be anyone. Mikkel could be a character that we have already met, but we just don't know that that was actually him like 30 years into the future. Like for all we know, he could be the main character's dad that committed suicide at the beginning of the show. Michael, I see him. Uh, for all we know, that could be Mikkel. Like, I do... Michael and Mikkel are really, really close names now that I think about it. I just realized that. I, I just realized that. Mikkel and Michael are really close names one from another. Okay, now that's my that's my okay. So that's my second stoner theory. So my okay. So my stoner theory so far are the first one is uh, the kid that we found dead uh, that looks like a kid from the eighties. It's Matt's, which is Ulrich's brother. The second stoner theory is that the hooded person, mysterious person in the hotel, is Mikkel. The third stoner theory is that. Michael Conwald. That is his name, yeah. Conwald. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm comparing their last names, but Nielsen and Conwald don't really sound anything alike. Maybe in German, uh, but yeah, no, they don't. But yeah, the third stoner theory is that Michael and Mikkel are the same person. Uh, that's That's just me throwing dumb theories out there. Uh, there's also the possibility that Matt's never went actually missing. Uh, we just are led to believe that. Um, okay, I I I think I had another theory, but I I forgot about it. I think I had another theory, but I forgot about it. So uh, whatever, I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. Um, another thing that happened in the previous episode is that there is something about about Ulrich's dad, okay? So we actually did get to have a look into Ulrich's parents' life, and Ulrich's mom, uh, she's an old lady, uh, she lost her son, like, 30 years ago, and she clearly feels like shit about it. She brings, like, a, a toy that, uh, he liked, I guess, back in the day, and changes, uh, like, replaces a toy on his grave and just rotates them every day i assume so she she's very caring she's very hurt um but then his dad doesn't seem to be hurt at all basically i mean it's been 30 years so that like i wouldn't blame him for just not caring at this point but uh more than anything he seems very mysterious he seems to be he seems to look very suspicious and he had blood on his clothes, and he just washed them before the wife could see them. Uh, sorry, I don't know their names yet, but I, I saw all of that, and I'm like, okay, this show is making me think that this guy is, is the bad guy. But I don't know. Because, like, there is a bunch of bad guys theories that we could have, and it's like, I, I literally don't know what we're doing here. I literally don't know what we're doing here. So, okay... The thing that was, like, almost confirmed, I mean, pretty much confirmed, is that, like, the nuclear plant might be just dumping nuclear waste or whatever in that one cave. And by getting into the cave, somehow there is a rift in space and time or whatever, and you get teleported to uh, specific time zones. I guess times, because it's the same space, right? Even though the Earth is always... Never mind that shit. Uh, but yes, um, there is something about that cave. There's something about the power plant, the nuclear power plant. They have something to do about that. We, I, I don't know who the bad guy is. And I don't know if there is even a bad guy. 
we'll just see. But the thought that I just had is that if you are presenting me this thing where if you're presenting me this thing where there is just a portal in this little town and people just travel back in time by 30 years every time or something like that. I'm just sitting here thinking like the entire town might just be like this cesspool of incest or some shit because everyone is related because everyone traveled back in time and just became part of the city and in their own creation. You know, the grandfather paradox, uh, bootstrap paradox, whatever you're going to call it. Um, causal loop. That That is that is the definition. Causal loop. Uh, I had a great episode of Doctor Who with that recently. Uh, the episode, what was it? Yeah, Before the Flood. Go and check that out if you're interested in that. Especially the description of that video. I went ham on that description. But the point is, time shenanigans are introduced. And at the very beginning of the show, uh, the narrator just said everything or everyone or whatever. Everything is connected. And I was like, this is probably going to mean something at some point, but I don't know what it is yet. I I might be getting close to that with my stoner theories. But again, they're just theories. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about them so much. Okay, another thing that I kind of forgot about, um, but I'm bringing it back because I realized, well, editing episode one. And this is going to be the last thing I mentioned, but... Ulrich's mom said, I saw something in the forest again. It was someone with a giant head. And that, that, imagining that, trying to picture that, freaks me the fuck out. That makes me so fucking anxious. Because I'm, I'm imagining something like the SCP, whatever, I don't remember the number of that, but like, the most known SCP that has like a game about it too, which is the SCP that like, teleports uh, and and snaps your neck and kills you or whatever while you're not looking at it, so you need to look at it, like, at all times, I think that's how it worked uh, that SCP is like a floating, like, alien looking thing, but it has a giant head and it's not even like a human head but it, it's creepy because it has a giant head. And I'm just imagining that in the forest. And I'm freaking the fuck out. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. But, alright. We'll see where we go with this show. It could be aliens. It could be sci-fi bullshit. It could be a rift in time. It could be Eldritch abominations. It could just be radiation. I don't know. It could just be mystical magic shit. I don't know. But we'll see. That was a lot of talking for this episode. Uh, sorry, I'm like, part of me is actually reminding myself about it before going in, just as prep, but whatever. Here we go. Dark, season one, episode three. Let's go. This kid must be freaking the fuck out. My parents, where are they? Was this after Matt's went missing? Do you know where he is? Do you yes. Know where Matt? You're hurting me. What are you doing to him? Say something. What is he coming back? Okay, this is after Matt's went missing then. Now we get to feel sad for this woman while it's happening. Like, I already feel sad for that woman in the future. Now I have to feel sad for that woman as it's happening. Past and present. Ines, who was Ines? That's the main character's grandmother. You know Michael's mom. This is gonna be so weird. Now we get to see all of the adults as the main characters. Yeah, dead birds. Do people not realize that sometimes every bird just dies? Is this a policewoman? I don't know her name, but the policewoman. She saw the birds die previously. I mean, that's a completely normal thing to do. Mads. Would that mean that a kid from the future is gonna show up? In the present, in 2019. Tideman. Who's Tideman? Where? 
I'm on my way. Tell you the man is the friend of the main character. So this is his granddad, maybe. Also, I think they were talking about Argentina and the soccer results on the radio. You can't go to school looking like Who's her? Who's she? I think you have no idea what I do. She's a complete nerd. Food, clothes, fencing classes. Who pays for all of that? And you can't even bother combing your hair? That hero looks fantastic. Shut up. That you look like a limp dish rag. She looks fantastic. Shut up. Oh, Regina, I'm talking to you. Who's Regina? I think she's the hotel lady. I love the 80s vibes that this shit gives me. I wasn't alive in the 80s, but I sure enjoy 80s music. Congratulations. Thanks. I always knew you would amount to something. Helge. That's Helge. That's the crazy old man. It's gonna happen again, man. That man. It's a book. Thanks. Okay, so something happens to this guy. Because in the future, he's fucked. I got here just before six this morning to feed them, and this is what I found. So not it's not only the birds. There's no wounds. You just fucking My drop dead. Nothing. Yeah. Who would just there kill is. 33 sheep? 33. Th Specifically 33. Okay, so it's 33 years ago. So 33 keeps coming back. Okay, so this woman, I have no idea who she is. I Mrs. believe Tideman? she might be... Mrs. Tideman. Tideman. Tideman, that is the... Yes. So she's either the mom or the grandmother. Those easy to get a hold of. I assume the grandmother of Bartos. Are you sure these figures are the correct ones? Yes. What was I gonna say? Yes, uh, Bartos' mom, she's got it going on. I'm looking for my dad. <laughs> What's his name then? Ulrich Nielsen. Ulrich Nielsen? The Ulrich Nielsen? Well, he works here, doesn't he? No. And I'm quite sure he never will. Yeah, because this kid is like eight. Did he do this to you? No. Did Ulrich do this? No. What year? It's 1986. So it is 1986. He read it on the newspaper, so he knows. He's just. This is. It's a lot to take in, kid. I have a big enough boy here. Can one of you come and collect him? Thanks. Yeah, they're just gonna take him away into a foster home or so whatever. Be coming here to pick you up soon and take care of that shit. We have no time for this today. This guy looks like Freddie Mercury, but it might just be the mustache. I miss you. What relationship do we have here? You can't leave me hanging like this. You know I need. So that's her lover, but she's a busy woman now. I do think this kid is smart enough to not be a piece of shit, but it's a lot to take in. The, this time travel bullshit. Hello. Wait. I'm just Ines. Uh, was I? Fucking right. Was I fucking right? I'm here to take you to the hospital. Is she gonna adopt him? And I'll get you home safe and sound. If he adopts him, I was right. The pieces are falling into place. Just playing this shit in the background. Hey! Ori is a gamer! Today's youth. Why are you here? You didn't even pause it. Everything seems to be fine. So how did this happen? We were in the woods, then we started running because the lights started flickering. 
And then I time traveled 33 years in the past. It just made a weird theory in my brain. I'm gonna say it before it becomes true, maybe. When people die, they don't die, they time travel. Just keep it simple, because we need to keep watching. I don't know who this man is. Were you trying to slip this past me? If there are skeletons in the closet here, then tell me what I'm missing. Okay, who's this? Is this the police lady? But in the past? This is sketching that burst. That's why she took the burp. She wanted reference. Charlotte. I that means nothing to me. Very strange. What? What what what? The eardrums are ruptured. On both sides. Okay. A shock. You come into our party Friday? The way he keeps switching from casual conversation to this shit is amazing. Okay, so they didn't die of sheer fright upon seeing something fucked up. The shockwave is what killed them, which makes sense because it also affected the birds. So I actually thought it would be something like that. But it is a physical shockwave then. Not like a magical, mystical, nuclear shockwave. It's physical and it has a force behind it. Okay. What we know is a drop. What we don't know is an ocean. Oh my fucking god. It is what is what I said. The people in charge of the nuclear plant, they're fucking with things that they don't actually know. But they take like they make use of it or they cause it, but they don't actually know it what they are actually doing. It's not even a cave yet. So that becomes a cave in the future. Weird. Right now it's like a... It's a pit. I come from the future. What did you say? The letter. I've come here from the future. I, I forgot everything about the letter. She should have known. She opens the letter the night that he disappears. Okay, what are we gonna see here? I'm actually scared. A bajillion... Holy shit. Okay, we made it through. No monsters to freak me the fuck out yet. But a bajillion... Nuclear waste barrels. So that's probably what's behind the door. I got to deal with something. I'll be home later. Now she's cutting herself. Well... There we go. I just realized something else. Hagen cut his ear. Maybe it wasn't him, but his ear, his ear was cut and like shot. Does he actually know? And he did it just so he could not hear. Like the shockwave wouldn't affect him or something. But it did. It happened again. Who's time traveling? Who's time traveling? That's a lot of births that just happened to be in this one specific camp. What the fuck? She's giving all of these dead birds, why? I mean, for reference to sketch, that's weird. Nichols knows that this happened the last time, so he probably knows that it might happen again. He's gonna fucking escape. Hey, Hannah. Hey, Laura. This is the apocalypse. Yeah, well, I don't know how the show ends, so maybe. It would be a lot brighter and louder. Mikkel is running into the forest, so maybe he can teleport himself back into the future somehow. He's running into the cave because he knows. Wait, that is the cave. So the place where the woman was wasn't the cave. It was somewhere else, right? He brings a lighter. Because. What would you wish for? That's easy. A world without wind in it. I'm so edgy. I have 70 years old. I hate my city. To a world without Winden. To be fair, this city is fucked up. Not even a city, town. This town is fucked. Now we see that Miko has time traveled 33 years in the past again.
we get to see these characters both here and then. The book. A journey through time. Preference number 1986. The parallel story there. They were always there. Wait, that was the guy that was trying to hook with I think that was the guy that was trying to hook with the with the nuclear plant lady. We have Ulrich having a bad time. Hello. I'm kinda of doing a Josuke pose from Jojo Part 4. Not really, but God damn it. Mikkel can't leave. He broke his leg. The lighter's gonna go out. Or maybe it won't, and maybe it will trigger something and it will kill him. Hello. What is Ulrich Hello. seeing? He senses that there's something around him. Okay, so Ulrich is still in the future because there is the... There is the thing. This is really well directed, I have to say that. I like this. Can we finally see what's in the letter? Who's this? This is the thing that the the person, the mysterious person, was holding. Who is this, and what the fuck is this? That's it. All right. Sure. That. Okay. Well, let's talk about that. That cliffhanger. I mean, that's not even a cliffhanger, I guess. I guess I'm used to cliffhangers. Or, like, I was expecting for one, because both episodes had, like, a cliffhanger. But this cliffhanger wasn't a cliffhanger, because they just showed me a scene that means nothing to me. Like, okay, I'll go back to it for, like, a second. I see someone that is in, like, a room with a ton of clocks... And he makes that one thing that that person, uh, the mysterious person in the hotel with the hood, that that's the thing that that person had. And I joked around the idea that maybe it's like a time machine or something like that. And it could be. Because this, this looks like some Gallifreyan ass shit. It really does. But I don't know what it is. And... The fact that they're just presenting this to me, like, oh, I'm like, I, I don't know what it is. I have no idea. I have no emotions towards the shot that you're showing me right now. I, I literally don't know what this is. So I'm just not going to say anything about it. So yeah, that that's that. I think this episode is definitely my favorite of the three that I've watched so far. Because this entire episode, mo like, I say entire, but like 98 of it happened in the past, happened in 1986. Uh, and we got to see one single day with everyone that we have met in the first two episodes, but in the past. So we got to see a bunch of characters that I thought didn't really matter too much. But now they are here, and they actually do matter. And, like, the main character isn't even here, and... Like, who who even is the main character, you know? Like, Jonas didn't show up at all <laughs> in this episode. So, like, that's the thing. Uh, we, we have a... Th I said this before. And, in fact, my, my sister started watching the show. And I was like, there's a bajillion characters here. So, try to pay attention. Because, to me, it's very difficult to actually keep track of who everyone is. I don't even remember their names, and I barely remember their faces. So it's difficult, which is why I refer to everyone as, oh, that's the police lady, that's the hotel lady, you know? I, I don't actually remember their names, and I'm sorry, uh, but I'm just gonna refer to them as dad, unless I actually do remember their names. Maybe I'll just write down all of their names, but I'm afraid of catching spoilers. So that's 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 a problem for me. Like, even if I wanted to go 
to like the wiki and read nothing but like a list of character names, I would probably see like I would see the name of like the hooded mysterious person. So it's like I can't even do that because even that is a spoiler, you know? I would know who that is. Maybe it's not anyone that I know of, but I don't know that, so I'm not gonna go and find that, but whatever. Well, fine. Let's just talk about the episode. So my favorite thing about this episode definitely is the fact that we just spent the entire episode in the past, in 1986. And uh, we did have a couple stuff that made me feel like I was in the 80s for like a second. That felt really nice. Uh, the music, uh, the, the entire vibe, the school, the way everyone just talked. That felt okay. I really did like that. Um, but... Um, so, Mikkel is trapped in 1986, and I actually didn't think we would go back and, like, see what happens as a result. I just thought we're just gonna time, we're just gonna go to the present, and then we're gonna see, and maybe, like, find out who Mikkel is, or where is he, what did he do, or what happened. But we were I didn't think we were gonna spend an entire episode in 86 just seeing what Mikkel is doing and in like trying to trying to do in like his I assume first and yeah first day in 86 and then like it's not only Mikkel because Mikkel is only a part of the episode then we also got to see we got to see Ulrich as a teenager we got to see uh Regina we got to see um the policeman which is the granddad of Bartos I guess it's not even no, it's not even the granddad, it's it's the great granddad, because the grandma is the one that is the charge at the charge of this nuclear facility. Like we got to see the policewoman, she she's cool, she seems like a badass, but in the past she was actually really into sketching dead birds for some reason. Well, maybe just into sketching, but then she saw a dead bear and I would and she went like, I could go for that. So then she started just collecting dead birds and just sketching them, which is weird, but, you know, when you live in a small town, you do weird shit like that, I guess. <laughs> Who else do we see? We basically saw, not everyone, but a lot of people. A lot of, okay. Okay, so... Unless I am mistaken... Ulrich's dad is actually cheating on Ulrich's mom, and he's hooking with... There's... There is a lot of parallels here. There is a lot of parallels here, okay. Um, okay, if Ulrich, okay, Ulrich's dad was, is cheating on his wife, on Ulrich's mom, um, with the lady that is in charge of the nuclear plant now, okay, then in the future, Ulrich is cheating on his wife with, uh, the main character's mom, who I theorize maybe works at the nuclear power plant but i'm not sure I, we, I i don't think i got to know too much about that but if that's true then we have both dads of the missing kids cheating with the power plant ladies i didn't even know if the main if jonas's mom i don't remember her name i'm sorry uh, if she's actually working at the power plant but there is enough parallels as it is right now this episode just gave me a great insight into all of these characters that I actually didn't give a shit about. Well, it's not that I didn't give a shit about, it's that I didn't think they would be as important to just have an entire episode where they are the main characters. Well, main character is kind of like a loose term here, but they did get like a lot of uh, play, a lot of, uh, a lot of screen time into their own lives, which was weird. Um, but I just didn't expect this episode to happen, basically. But I welcome it. I welcome it a lot. It surprised me, and I, I really like the entire... We're just gonna spend the entire episode in the past. I like that a lot. So the nuclear power plant lady, um, she's now in charge, and she's like, what the fuck are these readings? This is totally not what you told me they were. 
now that I'm here in charge, I can see the numbers and I see that they actually are not the numbers that I thought they were. If you have skeletons in the closet, tell me now, because it's, I need to know. And then the this guy that used to be the guy in charge, I guess, was like, listen, listen, if you are going to be in charge, you need to be in charge not only of the people working here, but the entire town. You need to actually care about all of them because they're all of their lives are in your hands and well, how well you do your job. And she's like, well, motherfucker, tell me, tell me your secrets because I can't do my job well without knowing them. So then they took her and she went down like a weird pit, like a rupture on the earth, like a crevice. And then she checked there and it was just filled with nuclear waste, which is a bunch of nuclear uh, residue barrels and it's like wow wow this 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 town is fucked this town is so fucked everything about this town and this power plant and everything is just so fucked but what are you what are you gonna do with that just just close the power plant and stop creating nuclear waste yes that's what you do Basically, evacuate the town at this point. I mean, if we got to the point where there's weird time travel and killings happening, it's like, you know what? Maybe let's just, let's just be done with this town. Let's just stop it. Let's just stop it. <laughs> but anyway, it's like, all right, so that's happening. I'm trying, there's something that I definitely want to talk about, but I want to see if there's something more that I can think of that I want to mention before going in there. Um, but I guess, fuck it, let's just go in there. I do like, so Mikkel just stole Ines. Ines is the Jonas's grandmother. Michael's mother told Ines, hey, I'm from the future. And she looked at me like, what the fuck? She looked at him weird. She looked at him like she was, like she was shocked. Not like she didn't believe him, like she was shocked, which is weird. But whatever, let's not think about that. That's probably nothing. But she, he did tell her, and if my theory is correct, if my theory is correct, and Mikkel is Michael, because those two names are way too close not to be, How old is Mikkel? Like, that's something... I wish I knew how old Mikkel was. Because when I went into Wikipedia and I read the super short, like... And when I read the super short, short like, uh, description of the first episode, just to write the names, I wrote 43-year-old Michael Conwald suicides at the beginning. That's... that's what I wrote. 43. So, 33 years... So, if Michael is Mikkel, Mikkel should be 10 years old by now. And he actually might be 10 years old. I think 10 years old is like the exact number he probably is. So, my theory that Michael is Mikkel, and Mikkel is Michael, is, is just, it's just growing stronger by the second. I don't think he is the hooded figure, the mysterious man. I think he's actually Michael. I think he's the main character's dad. Because he interacted more with Ines than with anyone else. So Ines might actually adopt him. And if she ends up adopting him, he becomes Michael. And then he becomes Jonas's father. And then he kills himself at the beginning of the show. Which sucks. But then at the same time, is that we did see... Like, a bloody version of Michael say Jonas and, like, show up uh, when Jonas was in the forest and he ran and freaked the fuck out. Jonas consistently has his ears ruptured. And that is something that happens with the shockwave. I'm just, I'm just trying to draw... Like, okay, this is like, okay, have you ever watched the Always Sunny in Philadelphia bit of Pepe Silvia? That's me right now. 
I'm just like crazy, just putting shit in like this fictional like board, and I'm just like this connects here, this connects here, and it's like what does it all mean? Papa Sylvia, Papa Sylvia, this guy, this name keeps coming back to me. Michael, 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 you know. And then I knock on the door and I say, Carol, Carol. Okay, never mind that. Let's stop with the always sunny bits. But yes, I'm just drawing a lot of like similar things and things that totally seem to be related because they give me just enough information to me like to be like these are related, but I can't actually know what the fuck does it all mean until I get there. So the fact that Jonas keeps having his ears ruptured, like he, he wakes up in cold sweat, he has a nightmare, and then his ears are bleeding, and he's like, what the fuck? And now I'm thinking, they just reveal that the sheep's ears actually got ruptured with the subway when they all died. So it's like, what the fuck? Because now we know that there is a connection from the that shockwave or whatever that attacked them and got them. And the main character, Jonas. Like, okay, maybe because he's the son of Miko, he has some weird, like, time travel genetics that make him... I I am I I'm just coming up with the dumbest ideas I can think of because I literally cannot think of what the show is gonna throw at me. Like legit. I can't guess because it's so stupid complex. So I'm just gonna say shit and hopefully something will be correct. But I don't think any of them I any of it will. The idea of Mikkel being Michael though, that that's money right there. I'm pretty sure I'm right about that one. Um but I'll see. It's either him or, like, the mysterious man with the hood. But I'm thinking it's Michael. I'm thinking it's Michael. Also, I said it earlier during the reaction. Um, I'm having this theory that when people die, they don't die. They actually time travel. They actually time travel or some shit. Like, Michael probably kills... Because Michael killed himself and then he showed up again. He showed up just, like... Um, and he talked to Jonas... And he was covered in blood. And it's like, what happened here? There's a lot of stuff being thrown at me. And I don't know what any of it means. And I don't know. I don't even know how to connect it. And like the fact that there is people that are actually getting murdered or killing themselves makes me think that. Because there is a weird time travel shenanigans shit happening, right? So the fact that that is going on. At the same time as murders, it's like, okay, that's a little bit too much. That's a little bit too much, and it has to be connected somehow. You know, it has to be connected somehow. And the way I can think about right now is that maybe when people die, they actually time travel. In some bizarre way. Like, maybe Mikkel died, and he time traveled as a result. You know, Matt's died, and... He's Corpse Central. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't even know about that one. But it's like, we saw Eric, Eric Ovendorf. We saw Eric Ovendorf die twice. Well, die twice, quote unquote. We saw him getting into the chair twice. And the background music, the background song that was playing was different. That makes me think those were two separate, two separate uh, scenes. And if we do that two different times then what does that fuck what does the fuck that mean that means we probably have two erics i don't think he has a twin if we have two erics we are talking about time travel then we have a past eric and a future eric eric alpha eric beta and then whatever eric alpha and eric beta fuck do like i don't know like i'm going crazy with the possibilities here Michael probably figures out, uh, if Michael is Michael, Michael probably figures, ends up figuring out how the fuck does it work. If he ends up figuring out how does it work, then he's like, okay, this is the moment where I time travel. Well, no, it was months before, actually, when he kills himself. Whatever, he comes up. When does he kill himself? 
Like, does he kill himself on, like, March 3rd or something like that? Like, because, like, the number 33 kept coming back, too. Whatever. The point is, if Mikkels ends up figuring out how it works, he's like, all right, at this moment, this very specific time, I have to go and kill myself. By doing this, I'm going to time travel or some shit. Or something, like, specific is going to happen. Like, I'm continuing the time loop. I don't know. I don't know. But this show is throwing so much shit at me. And in some way, it all has to be connected. So I'm just coming up with the wildest shit I can think of. And let's see where the show goes. And I, I feel like I've said that like 10 times already in like the past 10 minutes. But that's literally it. I cannot possibly understand what we're doing here on my own. I'm just going to have to get there. I'm just gonna have to get there. I want to talk about Ulrich's mom. Because this woman has... This woman is in fucking shambles. And I feel so bad for her. I feel so bad for this woman. And I, I just want to give shoutouts to that woman. To Ulrich's mom. Because she's having a rough time. In this show. So. Hang in there. <laughs> hang in there lady. She, because like. Like. Mikkel walked in. And she was like. Mats. Where is, tell me where's Mats. You know where he is. And he kept saying who are you. And he's like tell me where's Mats. And it's like oh my god. It's really sad. It's, it's really sad. I do really like the, at the ending of the episode, we did get to see all of the characters. We saw all their lives. And then we saw, like, we saw their future selves and what they were up to. And it's like, everyone is miserable. Everyone is super miserable. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I very much did like that comparison. And even we see the comparison of, like, Ines and Ines, and then starts there, and then at the end we did get to see Ulrich and Mikkel, just like at the cave, and one of them is sitting on the left, the other one is sitting on the right, and they're both looking for each other, except 33 years apart, you know, and it's, it's, it's weird. For a second I thought that Mikkel was gonna be stuck in the cave, and he couldn't leave because he broke his leg, and nobody was gonna help come and help come to save him. But it didn't happen. He he left the cave, so it's fine. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. I, I, I don't know what else to talk about this episode. Good episode. I, again, I very much did like hap just going through this entire... Like, this entire town that was already set with these characters that were already set. Fuck it. 33 years in the past. Let's just go an entire episode 33 years in the past. All of these characters, they're gone. All of these characters that didn't really matter too much, they matter now. Because now they're young. And all of these characters that now are old, but they didn't exist in your future because they're fucking dead, they're here. So it's like, the, the roster of characters actually expanded again. Which is fucking nuts. But overall, just really solid episode. Yeah. Alright everyone, thank you so much for watching this episode of Dark. Make sure to check the channel for other reactions as well as just liking, commenting, all that fun stuff you can do. I also have a gaming channel or Twitch or even my Twitter if you want. And I also have my Patreon where the next episode should be up as well as full length if you're interested in that. All in all, just thank you so much for watching this and I'll see you next time. Take care.